In this video, we will see about the dual converter fed DC drive. We have seen three phase fully controlled rectifier. Here, by changing the firing angle, you can change the voltage from positive to negative. That is, the average voltage can be positive or negative depending upon the firing angle. But current will be always positive because thyristors carry unidirectional current. That is, current can flow in only one direction. So, they are two quadrant converters. That is, you see current is here. So, current can be positive but voltage can be positive or negative. In some applications like uh, take a hoist, you need four quadrant operation. That is, it has to carry current in both direction as well as voltage should also change from positive to negative. So, you need four quadrant operation. So, how to achieve that four quadrant operation using three phase rectifier? So, this is a three phase rectifier. So, current always flows in this direction. And you are getting two quadrant operation by changing the firing angle. Now, I want the uh, current to uh, flow in opposite direction in the load. So, how is it possible? By connecting another three phase uh, rectifier in anti parallel direction. That is two converters I am connecting to the same load but they are in anti parallel condition. So, you see the numbering of the devices here I have mentioned for first converter the one has been used ok. Other numbering will be same. So, 1, 3, 5, 4, 6, 2 it is maintained as same but Previously, one more one is added to show that it is for first converter. Here, similarly, a 2 is added and after that you have 1, 3, 5, 4, 6, 2. Same numbering is followed. Okay? And you have to uh, remember one thing or the students, most students do mistake in numbering the phases. You see here A, B, C. A is connected to 1 and 4 thyristor. So, here also you have to remember that A phase is connected to device 1 and 4. Okay. So, when you connect the device uh, converter in anti parallel, this phase sequence should also be correct A, B, C. Though it appears to be easy to connect two converters in anti parallel, practically there are some issues. Like first thing from the load, the current should not enter into the converter. So, you have to provide diodes so that the current from this load will not enter into this converter. Okay. And uh, we this load is here and we are both the converters may be generating the voltage and that voltage will be out of phase that is instantaneous voltage will be out of phase. So, because of that what will happen a circulating current will be flowing or we can call that as a some leakage current type a current will be flowing in between the conductors which is not desirable. So, we have to limit that current also. There are two modes of operation for dual converter, non-circulating current mode and circulating current mode. In non-circulating current mode, only one converter will be in operation at any time. It means that you are basically operating it as a three phase rectifier and you are supplying the load. And if you want converter 2 or if you want to change the current direction through the load, you switch off converter 1. And then after some time, uh, the all the current through the load will become 0, you operate the converter 2. So, a delay time should be provided for the current to become 0. Okay. So, at any time, 
only converter 1 or converter 2 will be in operation. In circulating current mode, two converters will be operated at any time. So, one will be acting as a rectifier and the other one will act as a inverter. Suppose this converter 2 is acting as a rectifier, this will act as a inverter. So, how do you confirm that means if the firing angle of um, alpha converter 1 alpha 1 is 60 degree the other will be 180 minus 60 that is 120 degree that is so it acts as a inverter it acts as a rectifier so this condition should be satisfied alpha 1 plus alpha 2 equal to 180 degree so that one will be a rectifier and the other will be an inverter so in non circulating current mode uh, only one converter is in operation at any time and the other converter will remain idle. So, when you want to operate the second converter, you have to make sure the current through the load is zero and then operate the converter 2. And when this converter 1 operates, okay. So, it can operate converter 1 is nothing but a three phase rectifier. So, it can operate in two quadrants. So, for firing angle less than 90 degree it acts as a rectifier and you will get forward motoring mode and for firing angle greater than 90 degree it acts as an inverter and it operates in reverse braking mode. So, this is when converter 1 operates. So, when converter 2 operates you can get this reverse motoring mode as well as forward braking mode. So, this is forward braking mode and this is reverse motoring mode. So, these two operations you can get with no, converter 2. So, here you are operating in second and third quadrant. So, let us see the steps for speed reversal suppose converter 1 is in already in operation and you want to change the speed so in that case you can set the firing angle to highest value so that um, the armature current will become zero then you give some dead time and then set the converter to firing angle to largest value and then gradually adjust the firing angle so that the motor breaks and then you accelerate the motor in the reverse direction. So, all the uh, converters can operate in two modes. So, if you operate the converter in uh, as a rectifier you will get forward motoring and if you operate the converter 1 in as an inverter you will achieve reverse braking. Suppose you want to uh, do converter 2 in inverter mode you will get forward braking and if you operate the converter 2 in as a rectifier you can achieve reverse motoring. In circulating mode uh, current mode converter two converters are on or in operation at any time. So, both the converters will produce voltage though the average voltages may be equal their instantaneous voltages will not be equal. So, what happens due to that uh, a circulating current will be flowing between the conductors. So, it is necessary to limit the circulating current. So, for that normally reactors are used. So, this reactors are uh, help to uh, limit the magnitude of the circulating current. So, now your voltage will be here and the remaining voltage will be dropped here. There will be some voltage drop here. So, normally to avoid uh, the circulating current you have to ensure that same DC voltage is produced across the motor terminal. So, V naught 1 is equal to minus V naught 2 that is they will be out of phase but average value remains the same. So, 3 this is a 3 phase converter basically. So, 3 V m pi pi cos alpha 1 here you will get alpha 2. 
So, E equate it, you will get this condition alpha 1 plus alpha 2 equal to 180 degree. So, if one converter acts as a rectifier, the other will act as a inverter. So, if alpha 1 is 60, alpha 2 will be 120 degree. So, that this condition is satisfied. Now, we will uh, see the waveform for uh, this condition alpha 1 equal to 60 and alpha 2 equal to 120 degree. So, you have to draw the line voltage waveform. This table is same as that of a three phase converter because basically it is a three phase converter. So, when T1 and T6 are conducting your output voltage should be VAB. So, first we have taken alpha 1 as 60 degree. So, 60 means so, initial reference is 60, then we are giving alpha 1 at 60 degree. So, 60 plus 60, it will come 120 degree. So, 120 degree, your output voltage should be equal to VAB. So, here you follow this VAB waveform. So, it is here VAB waveform. After that, repeat the same pattern again and again write this one VAC, VBC, VBA, VC. So, VBA, VCA again VCB it will start again. Okay. Then for converter 2 we have taken firing angle as 120 degree. It means that 60 plus 120 your reference 60 plus you have to add 120. So, it becomes 180 degree. So, at 180 degree, you have to give the firing pulse for converter 2. So, now what is the, see converter 2 is connected in anti parallel to converter 1. So, if you are having A, B, you take V, B, A as the output waveform for converter 2. And if it is A, C, take C, A as output. So, here it is A, B. So, you see, take B, A waveform, follow that waveform. Okay. So, follow that waveform. So, it is V, B, A. And next one you have V, A, C. So, for converted to, it should be V, C, A. So, V, C, A will come. Next, here it is B, C. So, you write C, B. Okay. So, just mark one in uh, one pattern and repeat it six times same thing similarly for here also you just mark the starting instant see what will be the output so converter one and converter two are in anti parallel so this table is for converter one only so for converter two just take opposite of this one if it is vab you mark ba if it is AC, mark CA. So, let us see the advantages of circulating type dual converter. So, it will be helpful when you want to frequently change the ro uh, load current direction. Because some applications may require like that. So, for that you can use this circulating type dual converter. And this has a fast response. But disadvantages are there because you are using a large reactor which will increase the size as well as cost and losses will be there due to the reactor. So, efficiency will be reduced and uh, this converter has to carry both the load current plus circulating current. So, the rating of the thyristor has to be increased. The points to remember here are dual converter operates in all four quadrants of the plane. So, there are two types non-circulating current mode and circulating current mode. In non-circulating current mode only one converter will be in operation at any time and to operate the second converter you have to give a delay time. And in circulating current mode two converters will be in operation at, at any time and one will act as a rectifier while other will act as a inverter. And these dual converters are used for supplying four quadrant DC motor drives that is wherever you want to 
reverse the current frequently in that application dual converters are used. If you like the material do subscribe to read electric vehicle channel. Thank you.